Thank you. Uh, pleasure to be here. Uh, thanks, thanks, organizers, for inviting me. Am I audible? Should be fine, right? On on Zoom. Uh, I guess it's uh, muted. Uh, on yeah, one. you are. Okay, all right. We can hear you. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, yeah. So, um, you know, large language models are everywhere these days, right? So, you know, be it unimodal, multimodal, they are there everywhere. So, what I want to focus today uh, is what are the different research areas that we can we can explore in large language models, you know, uh, understand them, then leverage and improve them. Uh, so in, in, you know, before ChatGPT era in old NLP, uh, you know, the, there were frameworks like UIMA uh, that, that took years to build and that, that the story still are the same today, that it takes four years to build ChatGPT or equivalent models uh, at a billion scale, right, billions of parameters. Uh, but previously in old NLP, uh, things used to be modular. So you have things for reasoning, for question answering, for summarization, so different modules, you put them together and build a Watson. But these days, uh, you have one monolithic models and you actually do not know what's going on inside and you add task specific modules on top of it to perform different tasks. And uh, you, you have new methods to train such models uh, that are generative pre-training, RLHF, alignment, instruction tuning, etc. And the utility are great. So they can do now most of the natural language interactions, uh, complicated tasks like poetry generation, translation, software, and many, many other tasks. Uh, so now, uh, you know, uh, so in, in, in 2022 November, uh, when ChatGPT came and people explored it and were, you know, there was a situation that I had to do multiple meetings uh, with my students because they are all very stressed, like what research we can do in the era of uh, ChatGPT because most of the things ChatGPT already solved, okay? So is there anything uh, that in particular uh, we uh, can do? So, uh, so, so, so to, you know, uh, we, 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 we took a little bit of time, we read uh, about ChatGPT, we tried it, and we found that there are three main things that you can do, you can, you can still uh, research on. So first is understanding LLMs. So, you know, how LLMs do what they do, and what LLMs cannot do, okay, understanding that. Then leverage LLMs, uh, you know, how you can leverage LLMs for different purposes. So, for example, you want to do relation extraction, can we use the power of GPT-4 you know, or, you know, Lama 3, etc. To, to, to enhance in, in other tasks. Uh, also improving LLMs, uh, for example, you fix hallucination problem, you try to make them smaller, improve their performance, make them multimodal, etc. So there are, you know, these are only few examples of how, you know, we, we can do research in LLMs. But these three main categories are, you will find that most of the research in LLMs these days are focusing on. Okay. So uh, the first one is understanding LLMs. So I'll, I'll explain, and in, in this case, I will mostly focus on uh, our, our recent work on through controlled perturbations. So we will we will use some examples. So this is a this is a work of one of my students, uh, Pankpe. Uh, so what he did, he used an existing data where uh, GPT-4 excelled like 100% results. But then he what he did is very interesting thing. Uh, he created an ontology of skill sets. Um, for example, okay. Yeah, so he, he used a skill set of, you know, ontology of skill sets, for example, to solve mathematics problems, what are the different elements that we must solve. Um, so, uh, you know, so this is the title of the paper. Uh, we initially did it for only mathematical uh, competency testing. But uh, later, we also uh, test, you know, we, we also updated the paper with uh, coding competencies. So we tested the robustness of LLMs uh, and understand the skills of LLMs for mathematical and coding competencies in, uh, for, for, yeah, by using an ontology. Okay, so these are the 
research questions. So, how robust is the capability of LLMs in terms of reasoning and understanding of uh, the problem solving process and under which conditions uh, they, uh, there are limitations in the reasoning. Okay, so uh, what we did, so this is the overall architecture, what we did, uh, we took GSM 8K, we sampled five questions from GSM 8K which are very easy for LLMs to solve. So LLM achieves, GPT-4 achieves 100% performance on those five questions. Uh, Chat GPT, GPT 3.5 could achieve 80% means 4 out of 5 questions they could solve it. Then what we did, we part up the questions using uh, GPT-4. So as you can see that every question we uh, changed um, the question uh, uh, based on the perturbation. So for example, uh, this domain is variable uh, relationship or what if question. So this is the original question. John has three boxes. Each box is five inches by six inches by four inches, etc. And then what we did, we, we removed uh, the variables with uh, some symbols, X and Y. Then we asked the model to establish the, vari uh, the relation among the variables. Okay, uh, so this way we uh, designed our ontology and perturbed uh, the input questions. Now, this is the perturbation ontology, an example of the perturbation ontology. So more is for mathematics oriented uh, analysis and core is for coding oriented analysis. So uh, for math, we chose uh, GSM 8K, for uh, code, we chose human evil. And these are different types of ontology dimensions. So variable relationships, step necessity, like is there a way to determine the total inner volume of all three boxes without calculating the inner volume for of one box. So what it does is a very interesting thing. So suppose GSM, you know, LLM already performed nice, you know, very accurately on the existing question, 100% you know, accuracy. But if you tweak the question a bit, can it still perform, do, do the reasoning? Because if it has a holistic reasoning ability, it should do well even if you change the question slightly because human can do such reasoning very easily, right? So. Uh, what you observed is pretty strange. Uh, we observed that, uh, you know, due to this perturbation, so we had perturbations in different uh, ontology structures like logic alteration, concept analysis, which is more fundamental questions. Logic alteration is just change the logic a bit. Uh, and, and then format change, uh, you, you, you ask the question and come up, you know, ask the model to come up with the answer in a different format. So you notice that GPT-4's performance dropped from 100% to 78% for logic alteration. For concept analysis, where it is more difficult questions, the evolution of the question is more uh, difficult, more complex, uh, it uh, dropped from 100% to 64.62%. Uh, and all the other models suffered a lot. Okay, so these shows what are the skill sets the models are still lacking, although you, you, you you, you, you notice uh, excellent performance on the original data set. That excellent performance might come from data contamination problem, right? So these models might have already seen GSM 8K and human evil, these data sets and uh, giving you excellent results. But uh, what we, we, uh, we, we notice here, so when you, when you do such controlled perturbations using an ontology, like you define the skills using an ontology, like here, question simplification, reasoning adjustment, uh, computer adjustment, symbol manipulation, etc. So these are different skill sets. You identify what the models really lack. Okay, and you encounter you, you encounter those, you, you target those limitations and try to augment your data set, try to improve your data set, retrain the models and improve their overall skill in those domains. Okay, uh, okay, so I, I already covered this. Now, the second uh, work uh, about understanding uh, the skills and reasoning abilities of LLM. So this is a very new task uh, that we recently have done. So thanks to my student uh, Chia Yuken and Vernon, they have came up with this excellent idea of visual abstract reasoning. Okay, so what it does, so if you can see on the upper corner, uh, right cor upper corner, uh, this is the question, what is the missing color of the part denoted with a question mark? Okay, so this is a very simple pattern, right? So what we did, we, uh, we, we give these questions uh, to GPT-4. 
and we tried to understand whether uh, GPT-4 can, uh, can, can perfectly give you the answer, okay? And of course, using chain of thought and other kind of prompting techniques. Uh, so, uh, you know, so in, in, in Puzzle VQA, uh, we, we, how did we construct the data set? We had a layout, uh, we, we, we had a layout like that, and then we had pattern and objects. So, what we then did, we created demonstrations based on this and along with a query, okay? So, there are three reasoning steps in this, uh, multimodal reasoning steps in this process. One is the visual perception, so the model has to understand how many parts are there in the image, uh, you know, the colors of the image, and then uh, put them together and come up with an inductive reasoning uh, that what is really happening, okay? So you observe something and based on that, you come up with your induction. And then from there, it come up with the conclu conclusion, which is the part of the deductive reasoning, okay? So this is uh, a very simple data set. Uh, you know the the challenge. The, it's, 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 it, it does not look uh, look like a challenging data set. But the next uh, slide, uh, if I if I if I show you the results, you would be surprised. So human baseline. Uh, when we asked some graduate students and uh, grade six, grade seven students, they all performed greater than ninety percent accuracy on this data set. So our data set contains uh, twenty. Uh, sorry, two thousand samples in. Um, in 20 uh, puzzle categories, uh, 100 samples for each puzzle category. So when we, uh, we, we asked human to uh, annotate, uh, their performance was 92 to 93%. But GPT-4, as you can see, it performed only 43%. Okay, so this shows that although these models are uh, doing great, they still lack basic abstract visual reasoning, okay? Uh, and if you are um, if you are wondering uh, what are the different uh, taxonomy and puzzle categories we have, we have numbers, colors, size, shapes. These are the four basic pillars. Then we also combine them. For example, numbers and shapes together, numbers and colors together, and created the puzzles automatically. So we created the puzzles based based on a Python script and uh, some uh, existing rules. Okay, so. Now, uh, the second part of my talk today, which is about uh, leveraging LLMs. Uh, so, I will, I will, I will explain uh, how to leverage LLMs, but uh, based on just one, um, uh, based on just one particular technique, which is uh, through knowledge distillation. But of course, there are more techniques for it. Okay, leveraging LLMs, there are um, you know infinite number of perhaps techniques. Okay, so what is knowledge distillation? So you have a teacher model uh, and you try to extract, you know, run some forward propagation with the teacher model, you get the data and you teach a student model, okay? So there are different techniques for knowledge distillation. So one knowledge distillation could be, uh, you know, uh, with, you know, one knowledge distillation um, could be just no gradient computation, just pure, uh, like how Vicuna was created. You prompt GPT-4, you get the data from GPT-4 and uh, tune one Lama 2, okay? So you create Vicuna 1. Uh, that is a, one of the most popular ways when it comes to LLMs, but there are other knowledge distillation as well where the gradient computation is involved, okay? So you, t you, you do some tuning based on some loss. Okay, so uh, we, uh, we, we we published one work in I guess SL 2022 uh, uh, relation prompt. I think it was SL 2022 findings uh, relation prompt, the leveraging prompts to generate synthetic data for zero shot relationship rate extractions by my student uh, Ken. And uh, what we did, so we introduced a new task of zero shot relation triplet extraction. So, um, you know, this task means uh, if, I, if I give you a sentence, so it's a sentence level task, if I give you a sentence, uh, you know, so we have a head, uh, which is Nicholas Tyndall, and a tail, uh, and we establish a relation between uh, them. Okay, so the task is to extract both the head, tail, and the relation. Okay, this is a very complicated task. You know, there is there are no data sets available to solve this task. So uh, we, we propose this task, and without any manual effort, we try to rely on GPT-2's ability to ex uh, you know you know to uh, to construct a data set that can help us solve this task. 
through knowledge distillation. Okay, so the framework, the framework is very simple. So what we did, we created relation prompt where you can extra, you can give the relation uh, types, military rank, architect, etc., and it will generate a sentence with the relation and the head and tail entities denoted by the blue and orange colors okay so how is it done uh, so we had a relation generator where uh, which we use gpt2 so given an existing training data sets what we did we um, you know we we prompt uh, uh, we, 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 we we give a template to gpt2 where we mention the relation uh, label which is military rank and GPT-2 has to generate a particular uh, sentence containing the triplet okay so given the relation GPT-2 uh, generate the context okay in this particular template now we can resort to our existing uh, data sets that are available to train this GPT-2 to augment a data set in the following format then once we have the augmented data set, what we did, we trained a relation extractor, which is a BART model, it's a sequence to sequence model. What we uh, did, we, we gave it the context, uh, the generated output by GPT-2, and we asked it to reverse the process. Okay, I, we asked it to generate the head entity, tail entity, and relation. So it's, 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 uh, so, uh, it's, it's kind of a hack. So what we are doing, the target is to do zero shot relation extraction, but for zero shot relation extraction, we don't have enough data sets because there are number of unseen relations. We are focusing on GPT-2 to generate data set for those unseen relations. Once we generate this data set, we can train a smaller model to, uh, to, to extract the relation triplets. Okay, so uh, here is the overall algorithm. So what is happening here? So we have a data set, we have a trained data set and test data set. The labels of trained data set and test data sets are null, is a null set. So we are uh, fine tuning uh, the relation generator, which is GPT-2 and uh, once we fine tune, uh, so, so, so we fine tune both the GPT-2 and BART. So this is the pre-training, uh, this is the initial stage. Then we prompt GPT-2, for, for, uh, prompt GPT the fine tuned GPT-2 to generate synthetic data for the unseen labels, you know, denoted by YU. Once we have that, once we generate the synthetic data, we can train the extractor. Uh, our BART model on this uh, synthetic data. This will be our final model that we will use for the zero shot triplet extractions. So, uh, you know, the results that we found, uh, you know, still not excellent, but of course better than the baselines. Uh, as you can see that this is relation triplet extraction is a very difficult problem. So if, you know, any of you in the audience are doing PhD, this is something, this is a research topic that you can focus on. So it's still very challenging to do. Okay, so uh, there are follow-up works uh, of relation triplets. Uh, for example, uh, you know, you will, you will, you will find uh, papers from uh, Tom Missel's group on zero shot triplet extractions by template infilling, which have led a later uh, kind of uh, improved uh, relation prompt, uh, make it better, and outperformed uh, relation prompt by five to 15 percent. Okay. So uh, recently we did a follow-up of work of uh, document level relation triplet extraction. So the previous work that I have shown you is um, uh, sentence level relation triplet extractions, uh, which is uh, much more simpler. But when we talk about document level relation extractions, for example, uh, you know, we give you a text and ask you to extract all the knowledge triplets from the text and form a knowledge graph. So this is ultimately this technique can be used in a, uh, to, to curate a knowledge graph, right? So that is, a, that is even uh, a much more difficult problem uh, to solve, uh, but thanks to my student who is also in this audience, Sun Chi, uh, she developed an approach for document level uh, relation triplet extractions, which she will present in uh, dub dub dub. I think it's day after tomorrow is her presentation, so if you are interested, do attend her talk. Uh, so uh, what we did there, we created a new prompting technique called chain of retrieval for data generations. So I would not go through all the seven steps that I uh, say remarkably I uh, came up with, but this is pretty excellent. So this can give you a pretty good data. So you, you progressively prompt uh, GPT-4 uh, 
uh, to come up with the data given some unseen levels. So the unseen relation type, for example, screenwriter, you prompt GPT-4 progressively, step by step, and ultimately you can have a very nice data set if you, if you, if you follow this process. Uh, so what she did, uh, she applied her chain of retrievals, she got the synth synthetic triplets, and now she had synthetic triplets for multiple documents. And a lot of these documents will have, uh, you know, commonality in the, uh, you know, trip uh, relation type and the tail and head. So based on that information, she prune uh, the triplets and uh, based on this final data, she trained a llama using a LoRa, okay, PFT technique. And this was our final model. And the results are, again, not so excellent, but much better than ChatGPT or other baseline models, okay? So again, this shows that why document level relation extraction is such a difficult problem to tackle. Okay, so uh, now uh, we also uh, tried to uh, solve other problems. I think I'm, I'm running slightly late. Is that fine? I'll take 10 more minutes. Okay, thanks. Uh, so, okay. So now the synthetic data generation and knowledge distillation can have other, uh, you know, other benefits. So can we make an LLM safer? You know, so LLM safety is a big issue, right? So you can jailbreak an LLM very easily, even though you perform DPO-based or RLHF-based alignment techniques. So how can we make LLM safer? Okay. So we recently uh, have. Um, have, have, have done some experiments. So what we did, uh, we jailbroke uh, chat GPT. Uh, back then it was GPT 3.5. We jailbroke it using chain of utterances prompt. This is an ex a very important work by my student Rishav. Um, so uh, what what he did, he, uh, he jailbroke chat GPT uh, and extracted a lot of harmful data. Okay, lots of harmful data. Then what he did, he proposed an alignment technique to align the smaller model, for example, Lama 2, okay? So what he did, he extracted the red data, means the harmful data, then he performed gradient descent on the helpful data, which are not harmful, okay? And gradient ascent on the harmful data. So you have a mixture of blue and red conversations, which blue means the harmless data and helpful data, Red data means harmful data, but they are also helpful because helpful to your queries, okay? So basically you have harmless and harmful data. So what he did on the harmless data, he did gradient descent, of course, but on the harmful data, he did gradient ascent. So which is a type of model unlearning, okay? So you try to unlearn the information or the harmful information. So delete those knowledge from the uh, model's parameter space. So this, uh, this alignment technique gave him this model we called Starling, and Starling achieved decent results uh, 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 post uh, the safety alignment. Uh, as you can see, the truthful QA scores, um, you know, uh, improved to 49.60 from 48.85 on LAMA. This is a LAMA 7B backbone. And, uh, you know, the average score uh, of the problem solving, MMLU and BBH also stayed almost the same. So there is no uh, catastrophic forgetting as such. Okay, so uh, this is another uh, work by my student Dipan Noy, uh, who, uh, who created Tango and uh, the knowledge distillation and synthetic data generation played a very important role in this. So what he did, it's a very simple network. So he had a he has a diffusion model uh, and he prompted uh, the diffusion model with a textual prompt encoded by instruction tuned language model Flan T5's encoder and he generated uh, audio uh, from this uh, from the textual prompt. So this is a multimodal uh, text to audio generator and he has VAA and etc. So basically diffusion is an LDM, it's a latent diffusion model where the diffusion model generates the latent codes that we use in the VAE to, to decode using a hi HiFi GAN, if you are familiar with uh, audio uh, models. Uh, so this uh, model, we 
you know, ChatGPT generated data played a very important role. So we, 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 we instructed ChatGPT. So initially, a data set creation, you know, for this, the data set, crea data set creation was a big issue. So we had data sets which are like inputs are like accelerating, reviving, uh, race car, auto racing, etc. So based on these tags, we had to come up with a prompt, right, an instruction that we can give the model to train. So we used ChatGPT, we instructed ChatGPT to generate a data for this input prompt and it, it, it really performed excellent. And uh, we, we finally could create a data set of 1.2 million samples. We trained the model um, and we performed, you know, this was the SOTA uh, about 10 months ago, not anymore now. Uh, as you can, uh, so th there, there are some samples I can just play. Okay, there is no sound. Okay, never mind. So uh, there was this was the sorta ten months ago, but then Meta came up early this year in January and already outperformed us. Uh, they created AudioBox Sound, which is a proprietary model. It was not released uh, uh, openly, but uh, they trained on a very large data set, and uh, they, uh, they outperformed our model as you can see. Uh, so yeah, so this shows that you know this kind of research field has a lot of potential if uh, you know if, if if you want to pursue. So we, we did some follow up work. We recently created Tango uh, Two, uh, which uh, we where we used um, an alignment technique. So we used Tango. We prompted Tango by perturbing the input prompts. We created the pairwise alignment data, and then we aligned Tango using DPO. Uh, direct reference optimization. So we created Tango 2. As you can see, the Tango 2 performs um, the best. It's now the uh, now back at the SOTA open model, uh, SOTA uh, model, which is open source. And uh, you know, interestingly, Tango. You know, what why Tango 2 is better is of course based on the alignment and where the alignment performs the best, where uh, there are te temporal uh, elements in the prompt. Okay. Now the final part of uh, of the talk today, which is about improving LLM, I will I will just explain one particular uh, type of um, you know improvement, which is through retrieval augmented generation. So uh, this is our uh, paper uh, this year at ICLR uh, by my student uh, Ken with some other uh, students from NTU uh, about uh, it's called chain of knowledge. So what we did, so the existence, so the problem is, uh, suppose you have a question and the model does not really know the question. It does not have the knowledge inside its parameter. Okay, so it, it needs to retrieve some documents from the web and have to come up with the answer. So existing methods like chain of thought and self-consistency, uh, you know, it, it often fails when there is no majority. Uh, and verify and edit, this is also an existing uh, method. So what, as you can see, that uh, you cannot verify every output. Uh, so there is a chance of uh, error propagation. So what we did, we uh, tried to solve uh, this problem. So what we did, uh, we, we took a chain of thoughts, uh, rational generation, and we, we for every rational, we uh, retrieve the corresponding data. Uh, we correct the rational and uh, we, we follow the step only until we have the final answer, okay, where we consolidate the rational and uh, come up with the final answer. So I will uh, just uh, try to explain it quickly here. So uh, we have the rational from um, the uh, chain of thought and of course there is no, uh, 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 you know, so, so there is no majority agreement. So we, we, we come up with these uh, rationals, then what we do? We try to identify uh, the domain of the question. Okay, so for every domain, we have a dedicated knowledge base, and uh, every knowledge base could be uh, of a different uh, database structure. So one could be SQL, another uh, another one could be just plain text. So we have different experts for that. So we uh, select the knowledge, and uh, we uh, for every rational, we, uh, we retrieve the knowledge. We find the supported uh, supporting knowledge, we correct the rational, and uh, we uh, proceed to the next rational generation, and we continue the process. And the final stage is step number three is answer consolidation. So we take all these candidate you know rationals and consolidate them and come up with the final answer. And interestingly, what we also developed, we the knowledge retrieval component that we developed. 
we trained, uh, we, we, we used a diverse set of LLMs. We used ChatGPT, Llama 2, fine tuned on LoRa, etc. These are all uh, trained on different kinds of uh, query structure and query uh, databases. So this is some of the examples. So uh, depending on the database, our, the, the queries actually uh, change. Okay, And uh, to generate these queries, we trained uh, Llama 2. And the results uh, are significantly better than uh, the baselines, as you can see um, here. Uh, also, uh, you know, the improvement of this RNG type improvement can be also done in uh, KNN-based language models as well. So this is our recent paper by my student Rishav, published in this year's CMNLP. Uh, so what we did, we uh, so far, we, we, we created a data store where the data stores are basically vector representations of the data points. And given an unseen sample x, we uh, tried to compute the class probabilities based on the nearest neighbor rule. Okay, So this gives us class probability based on a KNN based uh, you know, classification model or KNN based language model. Then it combined the hypothesis of the original classification model, which is HCM, because the model, uh, is, if it's a classification model, it already gives you the probability, right? It's, if it is a softmax head, it already gives you the probabilities. You combine that with the, uh, you know, with the hypothesis from, that you get from the KNN, okay? And then you uh, calculate the classification error. And we found that this simple technique of, uh, you know, um, of, of a data store and get the probabilities together can improve the performance significantly on different data sets. So on some data sets, the performance improvement is even 14%, 7% to 14%. Okay, this is the final part. Uh, I would not take much time, maybe three more minutes. Yeah, so LLM jailbreaks. Um, uh, this is an interesting uh, piece of work. So there are different kinds of attacks that we can do to LLMs. One is distributional attack, perturbation attacks, and contextual attacks. So distributional attacks are multilingual. For example, you ask the same harmful questions with different language to the language model. Adversarial suffix is uh, you add an adversarial suffix to uh, the prompt uh, and to attack it. Contextual attacks is you already have a context which contains some harmful information and try to attack the model based on that. Okay, so uh, contextual attacks are found to be uh, you know excellent, like COU chain of utterances or chain of thought. They 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 perform really ex excellent. They can break GPT-4 by seventy percent. Now uh, you know uh, so. There are there are there is a surge of large language models for Southeast Asia, and we found that these models, although are very good in preventing distributional attacks and perturbation attacks, they perform very poor for contextual attacks. Okay, so now uh, what are the limitations of these attack types? They are hard to find. That they are not universal and low success rate. So how can we solve it? There is something called parametric attacks or LLM unalignment. So what you can do if you have a data set that you want LLM to fine tune on, you can insert a few a uh, few unsafe samples inside, and you can fine tune the model, and the model will, uh, will 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 generate harmful responses. So this process is very easy, very cheap, and high success rate. Now uh, we 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 know that this fine tuning can bring uh, problems in LLMs, right? Uh, it it can make LLM unsafe. So how can we make it's safe. So this is our recent uh, SEL submission. We call this process RESTA. This is a very unique problem statement that we proposed, and we solved it. So it has been seen that when you use, um, uh, when you want to fine tune a model uh, for some particular task, the model becomes very unsafe. Okay. So how do we solve it? So the idea is to compute. So what RESTA does? RESTA does task arithmetic. Uh, to compute the safe, to, to, to find the safe and unsafe dimension. Okay, so safety vector and unsafety vector. And it add or subtract from the base LLM, which is unsafe after fine tuning. So we first fine tune using SFT. So the models become unsafe here, the models become unsafe. Then we perform RESTA, which does task arithmetic based on subtracting the unsafety vector from this unsafe model. 
to make it safe. And as you can see in the results that after SFT, the models, the general attack success rate was 33.57%. After you do RESTA, you know, uh, uh, then the success, attack success, success rate drops to 11.15%. For the full fine, fine tuning, it drops to 1.82%. So that means RESTA is highly effective. It's a new parameter, it's a new gradient free alignment technique that you do post fine tuning. That's it. So this is our lab, declare lab. Uh, if Anyone in the audience wants to learn more about the activities of our lab, do reach out. Thank you very much.